He is known for being a controversial psychoanalyst who had a significant impact on continental philosophy and cultural theory. He is recognized for his yearly seminars in Paris and his published papers collected in the book Ecrits. His name is Jacques Lacan. In the bustling streets of Paris, a brilliant mind emerged from the shadows, challenging the established norms of psychology and psychoanalysis. Jacques Lacan, a French psychoanalyst and psychiatrist, was not one to conform or settle for the status quo. Described as the most controversial psychoanalyst since Freud, Lacan's ideas would shake the foundations of continental philosophy and cultural theory. With a deep reverence for Freud's work, Lacan embarked on a mission to bring a philosophical dimension to psychoanalysis. Drawing inspiration from structuralism in linguistics and anthropology, he wove together concepts that would redefine the field. But his unorthodox approach, coupled with his introduction of innovative clinical practices, set him on a collision course with the International Psychoanalytic Association. Undeterred by the opposition he faced, Lacan and his followers forged a new path. They established new psychoanalytic institutions to champion Lacan's work, declaring it as a return to Freud. This bold move was a direct challenge to the prevailing trends in psychology and institutional psychoanalysis, which Lacan believed were becoming complicit in adapting to social norms. Jacques Lacan, the renowned philosopher and psychoanalyst, was born in Paris to Emily and Alfred Lacan. Growing up, Lacan was influenced by his mother's devout Catholicism, but his deep interest in philosophy led him to question his religious beliefs and embrace atheism. His exploration of philosophical ideas, particularly the works of Spinoza, shaped his worldview and marked a turning point in his life. As Lacan began his academic journey at College Stanislas, his fascination with philosophy grew stronger. He immersed himself in the vibrant intellectual environment of Paris, engaging with the avant-garde literary and artistic scene of the early 1920s. He even had the opportunity to meet the renowned writer James Joyce, witnessing the first readings of passages from Joyce's groundbreaking novel, Ulysses. During this time, Lacan also had encounters with figures such as Charles Maurras, a literary stylist whom he greatly admired, and he occasionally attended meetings of Action Francaise. However, Lacan would later become highly critical of this organization. These encounters and experiences further shaped his intellectual development and influenced his later work as a philosopher and psychoanalyst. In 1920, Lacan's path took a different direction when he was rejected for military service due to his thin build. Undeterred, he decided to pursue a career in medicine and entered medical school. It was during his studies at the University of Paris that Lacan honed his skills in psychiatry, training at prestigious institutions such as the saint Anne Hospital and the Hospital Henri Roussel. The early years of Lacan's life were crucial in his intellectual and personal development. His abandonment of religious faith and his immersion in philosophy and psychiatry laid the groundwork for his groundbreaking theories in psychoanalysis. Lacan's journey from questioning religious beliefs to embracing atheism and delving into the depths of the human mind would ultimately shape his unique philosophical perspective. As Lacan once famously stated, my life will recur in exactly identical fashion, he recognized the cyclical nature of existence and the importance of self-reflection. His exploration of the human psyche and the nature of identity continues to provide valuable insights for individuals seeking to navigate the complexities of daily life. Jacques Lacan, a prominent figure in the world of philosophy and psychoanalysis, found himself deeply immersed in the vibrant artistic scene of 1930s Paris. He associated with renowned surrealists such as André Breton, Georges Buttoli, Salvador Dali, and even took on the role of personal therapist to the legendary artist Pablo Picasso. Lacan's interest in surrealism predated his exploration of psychoanalysis, with its celebration of irrationality and a neo-romantic view of madness as convulsive beauty. In 1931, after completing his studies at St. Anne Hospital, Lacan received his diploma in forensic psychiatry, becoming a licensed forensic psychiatrist. The following year, he obtained his doctorate in medicine for his groundbreaking thesis on paranoiac psychosis in its relations to the personality. During this time, Lacan began his training analysis with Rudolf Lowenstein, which profoundly influenced his future work. By 1934, Lacan had become a candidate member of the Société Psychoanalytique de Paris, embarking on his private psychoanalytic practice in 1936 while continuing his hospital work. It was in 1936 that Lacan presented his seminal analytic report on the Mirror Phase at the Congress of the International Psychoanalytical Association. However, the Congress chairman, Ernest Jones, abruptly ended the lecture before its completion, leading Lacan to leave the event in indignation and instead witness the Berlin Olympic Games. Lacan's attendance at the lectures of Alexander Kojiv, a philosopher who focused on Hegel's theories, between 1933 and 1939 had a profound impact on his work. 
These lectures, particularly on the master-slave dialectic, influenced Lacan's formulation of his groundbreaking theory of the mirror phase, which also drew inspiration from Henri Wallen's experimental work on child development. In 1938, Lacan contributed a significant piece titled La Famille to the Encyclopédie Française, under the commission of Henri Wallen. This text delved into the complex dynamics of the family and further showcased Lacan's intellectual prowess. Despite facing opposition from some senior members, Lacan was granted full membership to the Société Psychanalytique de Paris in the same year. Beyond his intellectual pursuits, Lacan nurtured a personal life as well. He married Marie-Louise Blondin in 1934 and welcomed three children into their family. Their daughter, Caroline, was born in January 1937, followed by a son named Thibault in August 1939, and a daughter named Sybil in November 1940. Jacques Lacan's journey through the 1930s shaped his philosophical and psychoanalytic foundations. His immersion in surrealism, his groundbreaking contributions to psychology, and his encounters with influential thinkers molded his unique perspective. The impact of Lacan's work continues to resonate, offering us insights into the complexities of the human mind and providing tools to navigate the mysteries of our daily lives. Jacques Lacan, the renowned French psychoanalyst, found himself embroiled in a complex relationship during the tumultuous years of World War II. Sylvia Butterly, the estranged wife of his friend Georges Butterly, became Lacan's mistress before the war and ultimately his second wife in 1953. However, their relationship was far from ordinary, as Sylvia faced the constant threat of deportation as a Jewish woman in occupied territories. During this perilous time, Lacan intervened personally with the authorities to secure papers detailing Sylvia's family background, which he ultimately destroyed. His determination to protect her from the clutches of the Nazis reflected the profound love and devotion he had for Sylvia. In 1941, they welcomed a child named Judith, and Lacan chose to delay the announcement of their planned separation and divorce until after the war. While the war raged on, the Société Psychanalytique de Paris SPP, temporarily disbanded due to the occupation of France by Nazi Germany. Lacan, called up for military service, split his time between his duty at the Val de Grace Military Hospital in Paris and his psychoanalytic practice. He temporarily halted his publication of academic works, focusing instead on studying the Chinese language, eventually obtaining a degree from the École Speciale de Longs Orientales. After the war, Lacan's life took a new direction. In 1945, he embarked on a study trip to England, where he interacted with prominent British analysts such as Ernest Jones, Wilfred Bayan, and John Rickman. Bayan's work with analytic groups left a lasting impression on Lacan, influencing his later emphasis on study groups as a means for advancing psychoanalytic theory. His visit was documented in his report, La Psychiatrique Anglaise et la Guerre. In 1949, Lacan made significant contributions to the field of psychoanalysis. He presented a groundbreaking paper at the 16th IPA Congress in Zurich, titled, The Mirror Stage, as formative of the eye, as revealed in psychoanalytic experience. This paper delved into the concept of the mirror stage, exploring how self-perception and identity are shaped in early childhood. Simultaneously, Lacan developed protocols for the training of candidates in psychoanalysis, outlining his vision in the Doctrine de la Commission de l'Enseignement. Jacques Lacan's experiences during the 1940s showcased not only his intellectual prowess but also his unwavering commitment to love and protect those closest to him. In the face of war and uncertainty, he navigated complex relationships while continuing to push the boundaries of psychoanalysis. His journey during this period laid a foundation for his future contributions to the field, leaving a lasting impact on the understanding of the human mind. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.